with Sewell C. Biggs Curatorial Fellow here at Winneter, as well as a 2020 graduate of the Winneter University of Delaware MA program in American Material Culture. I am so pleased to be sharing a bit about one of my favorite and I think one of the most interesting spaces in Winneter with you today, which is where I'm standing now, Montmorency Stair Hall. If you've taken an introductory tour with us in the past, this room will no doubt be familiar to you. And even if you haven't visited us on an introductory tour, you may still recognize this really iconic Winneter space. There is so much that we could talk about in this room from the furniture to the artworks to the glass and ceramics, but I'm gonna focus today on the architectural elements. So the staircase behind me, the woodwork and the plaster ornamentation that were collected by Henry Francis DuPont and installed in the house in the mid 1930s. Montmorency Stair Hall gets its name from the plantation home of William Williams who lived in Warren County, North Carolina in the northeast region of the state and close to the border of Virginia. Williams' wealth came primarily from selling the agricultural products of enslaved labor. Black men and women enslaved by Williams cultivated cotton on his 6,000 acres of land and sold that product to mills in England, continental Europe, and the northeastern United States. While the labor of all 133 men and women enslaved by Williams built the fortune that made Montmorency's construction possible, some built the house in a more literal way. Williams's 1839 will records that at least two, though probably many more, of the men and women he enslaved were craftspeople, Wiley, a carpenter, and Sam Hill, a blacksmith. After William Williams' death in 1832, Montmorency remained intact and passed through several families and tenants for over a century before its journey to Winneter officially began. Between its 1820 construction by enslaved artisans in North Carolina and its reconstruction and modification here at Winneter in 1936, the woodwork and ornament from Montmorency changed dramatically. Changes not only in location, use, and meaning, but physical changes that altered the size, materiality, and continue to shape how we think about and use this space as a museum today. H.F. DuPont first set his sights on the Montmorency woodwork in the mid-1930s. He had finalized his vision and design for a six-floor addition to Winneter, by 1931, and he sought out not only antique furniture, paintings, and decorative arts, but architectural salvage from 18th and early 19th century homes along the east coast of the United States. Just as he had done at his summer home in Southampton, New York, HF incorporated historic furniture and architecture into usable living spaces according to his own vision of beauty and design and craftsmanship. H.F. DuPont was especially interested in finding a staircase to install here, the room that had been the main entrance of his father's 1902 addition to the Winneter house. DuPont told his dealers on the hunt that the staircase he sought was, quote, to be wide and graceful with an easy ascent, have mahogany rails, and treads with fine carving. As Henry Francis DuPont looked to architecture from grand houses in the American South to outfit this space, collectors and designers like him had already begun to capitalize on the economic instability of the South following the Civil War, Reconstruction, and Great Depression. In fact, once DuPont's dealer Adelaide Howell purchased the Montmorency woodwork for him in 1935, he took extraordinary lengths to visit the house in secret. HF used an alias and had his usual driver from Delaware, Dana Taylor, drive a rental car with DC plates. All of this to avoid being spotted by other competing dealers and collectors, and perhaps even the Warrington locals who may have solicited DuPont for other purchases, attempted price increases encouraged by his wealth and, and status, or felt frustration at another wealthy northerner purchasing and removing local historic materials, a practice that some southerners dubbed a second Yankee invasion. Total, Henry Francis DuPont paid Adelaide Howell 
$12,250 to find, purchase, and then sell him the most of the historic interior and exterior woodwork and composition ornament from Montmorency. Once it was transported here to Winnetor, and the DuPont family left for a trip around the world in January of 1936, construction officially began. Henry Francis DuPont's focus on viewing the rooms in this house as unified compositions can make it hard to know, especially with historic wood and plaster ornament, what is original to the North Carolina house and what had to be reconstructed here in Delaware. Keeping records to distinguish between old and new material was not necessarily a priority for Henry Francis DuPont, like it might be for museum workers and preservationists working with historic interiors today. The workers in Delaware had to modify much of the historic wood and plaster work from Montmorency to fit it into a modern space, which led to several design and structural changes, additions, and trade-offs, including a shift in the shape of the staircase from circular to the elliptical form that we have here at Winneter. The Delaware craftspeople also added some of the punched and gouged decorative work that ornaments the stringer on the stairway, the seat rail, and recreated plaster ornament where needed. Perhaps most importantly, the Delaware builders soon realized that Montmorency's staircase, with its age and modifications to a new space, might not be strong enough to support the movement of people and heavy furniture at Winneter. So while the staircase that you see here may look straight out of 1820s North Carolina, its surprisingly modern infrastructure consists of steel beams and plates. The DuPont family and their guests used this space until they moved to the nearby cottage before the museum's opening in 1951. If you were a visitor to the newly opened Winneter Museum, the DuPont approved interpretation of the stair hall that you would have heard as a visitor was that, quote, the woodwork and plaster cornice of this hall came from Montmorency, a house near Henderson in Warren County, North Carolina. H.F. DuPont's goal for his living spaces and for his museums was to construct beautiful, harmonious, and historically inspired interiors through the pairing of antiques and a sense of modern design. While H.F. DuPont amassed his famous collection of Americana for aesthetic reasons, he also knew the value of cutting-edge research. Today, two graduate programs, one in American material culture and one in art conservation, are housed here at the museum, continuing that legacy. In fact, the foundation of the research that I've shared with you today about Montmorency Stair Hall comes from two former members of the Academic Affairs Department. Rosemary Krill and Maria Shevzov. In their article published by our in-house academic journal, The Winneter Portfolio, Krill and Shevzov note that, quote, DuPont's acquisition of the paneling, ornament, columns, and floorboards of Montmorency preceded his knowledge of its history. But our curators, professors, research fellows, and students continue to mine his collection for new information to share with you, our visitors, and our members every day.